Welcome to Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we're doing a retrospective review of The Burning. A Legend of Terror is no campfire story anymore. Directed by Tony Malum, starring Brian Matthews, Leah Aries, Brian Backer, Larry Joshua, and Jason Alexander. The Burning is a camp slasher about some campers who play a prank on the caretaker, and in doing so, they accidentally set the whole cabin ablaze and actually burn the hell out of this poor man. He survives, he goes to a hospital, and eventually he's released. Years later, he is a ghost story told around the campfire, the legend of Cropsy, and he seeks revenge on campers with a pair of gardening shears. Before we get into our review, our retrospective reviews are very spoiler heavy, so we encourage you to watch the film before you watch this review. So let's get into our likes. This is a classic camp slasher. It's neat that this was Miramax's first film before they were Miramax. And it was one of those films that Tom Savini had a huge hand in and helped like elevate his career past the Friday the 13th series, which he, opted out of to do this because he was like, nah, Jason's dead. I don't want to do Friday the 13th. I do find it funny that this is a lot of first for many people. This is Jason Alexander's first film, and he is a comedian who goes on to become George Costanza from Seinfeld. Believe it or not, George isn't at home. Please leave a message at the beep. I must be out. And he's in a horror movie. That's his first film is this slasher. And another hidden gem is Fisher Stevens. He goes on to films like Short Circuit, The Mario Bros, and Hackers. Come on, you son of a bitch. Is that all you got, huh? I think it's kind of cool when you get a classic like this with people who've never done anything and their starting ground is a horror film. And another first is Holly Hunter. This is her first role as Sophie. The Oscar goes to Holly Hunter. I really enjoyed how this film was shot. It goes through the POV style of killer. We don't actually see Cropsy until the end of the film, which I like. Even though you know it's him attacking him, there's no mystery behind it, it's nice having the POV style because it's the perspective of the killer. It's a unique and underutilized style of cinema that you don't see in horror that often these days. I loved how brutal the kills were because we had some great kills all done by Tom Savini. Everything is super bloody and and gory and often hilarious looking back at it, but I mean, they all stand out. Specifically, the raft scene that is now like a cult classic scene from old school slashers. Absolutely hilarious. <laughs> The uh, slicing of the fingers, I think, is just spot on. I like the campers in this movie because they're not dickheads. Like, yeah, we have some dickheads. Like, what are you staring at, you little fucking weirdo, huh? Like Glazer, they absolutely hated him. But for the most part, the campers got along, and they're just like having fun. You don't really want to see them die, so when they do die, you feel bad. I also really like the whole location of the campgrounds, because it's this open forest, it's a lake, there's like an abandoned building. Like, they had some really cool sets to play with, which set up to some really cool kills and interesting moments in the film. And we found out that they were actually shot like half hour from here <laughs> in North Tonawanda, New York. And no 80s slasher is complete without a synthy sounding score, and we got one from Rick Wakeman. This soundtrack was perfect for setting the mood for a campground killer to go and kill people. And yeah, creeping through the woods, you know, you got like the cool music leading up, uh, especially with like the POV shots, mm -hmm. and you had the creepy sounds, it just, it just works. And I think we'll probably have this exact same like in every retrospective <laughs> review because they all use the same goddamn shots and music and generally have the same backstory. Kid was tormented, kid grows up and seeks revenge. And then we get boobs. Yes, and then we get boobs. I felt weird looking at some of them because looking back at some of these 80s chicks, you're like, are they even of age? Like, there are a few girls playing some softball running with their boobs flopping all over the place and I'm like, I don't know if you're legal. That's a no sale. <laughs> hey, I can't tell because you've got like that weird 80s haircut. Yeah, well, they're older than us. Yeah, well now they're older than us, but looking back, I don't know if they were. Now let's move on to our dislikes. This is a hard dislike because it could really change the film or not change it at all. And 
I felt it waited too long to kill one of the camp counselors. We didn't get a death until very late into the movie. It didn't really feel too out of place for the film, but at the same time, it would have been nice to just have like one counselor or like one camper die and just say that they've gone off missing before they go to the next island, just so that like, that sense of danger is actually present. Because for the most part, we're only getting a guy lurking on these campers. We're not getting him killing the campers. So there isn't that threat. I agree. I think it was a little bit slower at the beginning. Thankfully, we did have Jason Alexander. Like, his comedy alone basically kept me entertained. Girls all set for the trip tomorrow? Nothing I can get you? Life jacket? So to me, it didn't matter that there weren't many kills at the beginning, but yes, at least one would have been good so that somebody knows that there's a killer going on. This isn't a dislike for the film, it's a dislike for Jason Alexander's career. This is about to be the greatest moment in your life. I wish he stayed in uh, 80s horror movies forever. He was really funny, and damn it I hated when I didn't see him. When the raft goes off, even though I enjoyed the raft sequence, all I was thinking was, what's he doing? What's he doing back there? Like, can we get a camera of him saying some shit? Something that was pretty disappointing was the actual look of Cropsy. I don't think that he looked that great. Please, go. Oh, no! No, get away! Get away from me, please! Ah. I think that it could have been the coloring, perhaps. He looked like too bright, vibrant pink, and he didn't look quite like a burn victim, he looked like a melted guy. I just didn't like the look of him. He wasn't scary, it was more humorous, and even if I saw this in the 80s, I'd still think it looked dumb. Even though it was mainly focused on the POV shots, when we did see him, he wasn't really on long enough for us to even care that he was burned. Like, he didn't have to be burned at all, because, it didn't matter, we didn't really see it. The costume looked really lame, so he could have just been a crazy caretaker. Right, yes, it didn't matter, like his whole backstory didn't need to exist. He was basically just, he was basically in a black jumpsuit, and yeah, his face was on screen for maybe 20 seconds total. I feel they could have done something where the kids accidentally like cut off a limb or something, and that's why he's like, I'm gonna hedge clip all of you because the hedge clippers played a more important role than him burning people. Right, because he wasn't afraid of fire. He wasn't afraid of water. Like the, He wasn't really afraid of anything. No. So the fire didn't need to be the reason. And I guess it, they don't need a reason in the 80s when you're setting, you're setting slashers. Like that, I guess that's the difference. It's like we've seen so many slashers at this point, it's like, well, there are different ways to tackle that. But at the time there wasn't, <laughs> like it's just, Let's create something and we'll see how it goes. Actually, let's not create something. Let's let somebody else create something, see what they've done and copy it and then do it again. And that's how the 80s went. <laughs> so to them, I think it was just kind of like, let's crank it out. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. The Bernie is just one of those great old school, classic summer camp movies. I mean, aside from Sleepaway Camp, this is the other one that you should watch if you haven't. It's fun, it's funny, there's a lot of people getting murdered, lots of blood, some nudity, and just overall, it has a really cool summer vibe to it. I did have some issues with the way that Cropsy looked, and some of the pacing towards the beginning of the movie, but all in all, I would totally recommend this, so I'm gonna give this four bags of rubbers out of five. Look, I asked for lubricated rubbers. These aren't lubricated rubbers, you understand that? The Burning is a good camp slasher. It's a fun time, you got great characters that you're gonna actually enjoy and not wanna see die. But when they do die, it looks good. I was very impressed with the kills. Tom Savini did a really good job in this film. We had a bit of a slow pace at the beginning of the film and I would have liked it more if everything was spread out. But I did like that this was a first for many young actors. Cropsy didn't look the best, but they solved it with the classic POV killer shot. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this film three and a half awkward creeps looking for a peep out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't and you do want to check it out, Scream Factory has an awesome release and I highly recommend it. Lots of special features. There's links in the description. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay updated with everything, Bloodbath and beyond.